To get to this thermostat housing, which is that right there, I'm gonna start by removing this hose right here. Pop this off of the air box. I'm gonna remove this clamp so I can remove this hose. Uh, I'm also gonna remove this clamp right here. Take this out, loosen up on this clamp. Wiggle this off of the air box and push it to the side. Follow this radiator hose and let's remove it off of the thermostat housing. Squeeze the clamp with some pliers, pull it off, set it to the side here. Now keep in mind there will be coolant coming out. I won't have any coolant coming out because for me it's already um, out of the system. Uh, but typically you would have coolant coming out of here and the reason I didn't drain it prior is because no matter how much you drain it, there will still be a bunch of coolant behind here. So it's gonna make a mess regardless. So just go slow and make sure that you have a collection bucket underneath to catch the fluid. Unplug this right here. So that's the hose that we just removed. If you follow the housing down, you'll see another hose right there. Let's get this one off as well. gonna go ahead and use my hose clamp pliers. You can use regular pliers like I was using, but it's a little bit difficult to maneuver in there. And since I have these, might as well use them. Give it a couple twists to break this free. And with the hose clamp still pinched wide open, remove the hose. Let's release the hose clamp. Set this hose out of the way. And now if you look at the back of the thermostat housing right there, you'll see these two hoses. We'll have to take both of them off. Pull the hose clamps off and then give the hose a little twist to break it free. If you're gonna use pliers to do that, make sure you're very gentle. You don't wanna tear the hose or anything like that. One. Let's get to this lower one, which is a little harder to get to. All right, that's off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this sensor while the thermostat housing is still mounted. It has a little tab here that you have to lift on, and then if you just twist it, it should unlock itself and you can pull it straight out, just like this. Save this sensor, set it aside. This thermostat housing is held on by three 10 millimeter bolts, so I'm gonna go ahead and break them all free. There's one right here, right where the uh, lower hose attaches. And then if you follow it in, right between the two hoses, is another one and the last one is on the other side here that one's this is gonna be the hardest one to see but it's right underneath this area here so let's take them all off all right all three are out now you can grab onto the thermostat housing wiggle it and slide it off of the engine block. Watch out, there will be coolant left in it. There it is. All right, so you'll notice here that we have some things to clean up, especially this area here, this one here, and then we have to swap the O-ring on that pipe here. I'm gonna take a razor blade, try not to get any stuff inside the engine here, so scrape away, but you want this area clean so the gasket can seal up. Now take a rag and just wipe off the surface. Make sure all of the coolant ports are clean. I'm gonna put some brake parts cleaner on the rag so I can degrease the surface. And back here we have to take this O-ring out and swap it with the new one that is provided with your thermostat housing. To do this the easiest, you can just use a pick or a screwdriver, get underneath it, pop this out. 
make sure this part is clean. If you wanted to, you can put a little bit of coolant on this O-ring, that way it slides on easier, it doesn't go on dry, that'll help the housing slide on as well. And one more O-ring we have to replace is this one right here for the sensor. So same thing, go ahead and pick the old one off. And with this groove cleaned up, go ahead and slide the new one on. Make sure it's seated properly, which it is. And take your new thermostat housing, make sure that there is a brand new gasket or seal on this port right here. This one is actually the uh, thermostat. So you have to make sure that this little valve is facing towards the top. That way air can escape through it. And also the spring part faces inward like this. And you'll notice that the gasket has a little notch here that has to line up with this groove over here. So if your gasket isn't lining up like mine, you're going to have to go ahead and spin it around or just take it off and position it whichever way it needs to be. Now if I put it in, make sure it seats itself fully. That looks perfect to me. This is lined up, that's at the top. Let's get the thermostat housing in. You're gonna have to press it down on that lower hose with the O-ring first. That just slid right on, perfect. Grab your bolts, start those on. Let's snug these up. I'm just gonna take my quarter inch ratchet and double check that these are actually nice and tight. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, tight. Now take this sensor here, slide it down all the way and twist it to lock it in, connect it. Now at the back here, let's put the two hoses back. This is gonna be the more difficult one. Make sure it's bottomed out all the way. All right, that clamp is on. Now get the top hose in. There we go, this one's a little easier. Let's move over here to this hose. Okay. And lastly, this hose. Bring the air intake hose back, line it up, snug up the clamp. All right, take this hose, put it in here, squeeze the clamp first, of course. Make sure that's seated in all the way. And don't forget about this little hose here. Just like that. Let's fill up the cooling system. Remove your radiator cap. And I have this spill-free funnel, which goes on here, locks on tight so that you don't have to worry about overflowing and spilling everywhere. However, if you don't have that, you can just use a regular funnel. Uh, it's just that this one works a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Let's fill this with coolant, manufacturer specified coolant, until it stops bubbling. Then we'll run the engine to fully bleed the system. At this point, it has stopped bubbling. As you can see, I have massaged the hoses a little bit. Usually that gets some extra air out. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the engine so that the water pump can circulate and push out any excess air that might still be stuck in the system. And when you run the car, you wanna make sure your heat is all the way hot. Um, leave the blower on vent, that way you can feel the hot air. And then the blower motor, you can leave it on low. You don't have to max it out or anything, but you wanna make sure that the 
AC is off also, okay, so no AC heat on. That way the heater core circulates the coolant. And as the car is running, you wanna pay attention to this temperature gauge and make sure it does not climb above halfway. And if it does, that means it's overheating. You need to shut the car off, let it cool down, and try again because it's most likely just a pocket of air somewhere. And once the car has ran and everything has cooled down, I'm gonna cap this off. Go ahead and remove your funnel if you used one. I'm gonna put the leftover in my overflow tank. Perfect, make sure you don't go above the full line. You can see that right on the side here. Cap this off, take it for a road test.